words, words, we have uh, distinguishing words. We have uh, five vowel words, we have uh, uh, consonants, we have vowels, we have nouns, we uh, speak of diction, and so on, all relating to, to words. We, we have cuss words, we have marginal words, we have complementary words, we have critical words. Oh, words, words, words. The Bible has a lot to say about words. I thought I'd share a few thoughts with you, if you don't mind. Uh, when God created everything in the book of Genesis, everything he created, he did it by speaking words. You remember, in the beginning God said, let there be light. God said, let the light be divided from the darkness. God said, let there be dry land. And so, and God said, everything that God did, he did by words. In fact, in one place, it does it not say that um, his words shall not return to him void, but uh, shall accomplish that for which it was sent. In other words, when God speaks, however he does that, magnificent mysteries, and I don't fully comprehend, but I think about them, everything God made, he made with words. And then he, he said, as though he was speaking to someone else, he said, let us. Um, to whom he was addressing that is an interesting thought. But he said, let us make man, human beings, in our image and after our likeness. So here we are, angels are not made in his image and after his likeness. We are. And uh, I think... Uh, of all the ways in which we are alike in his, uh, after his image and in his likeness, I think of one thing that is unique to mankind, to humans. I speak seven languages, not all of them fluently, but can get around. I love the beauty of languages and the ability to express but uh, do you know that chimpanzees can't do that? Whales can't do it. They can click. Or they can click. Dolphins can use a form of sonar to communicate. And the, the horse uses the, the neigh and the, uh, the donkey, the bray, and the chicken, the cock-a-doodle-doo, and whatever. But only human beings have the capacity for intelligent, communicative speech. Only human beings. No other living organism. Oh, they say you can teach a chimp uh, to understand some languages. Yeah, you can talk to, teach a dog to do that. But the dog's not going to talk back to you and say, would you repeat that, please? <laughs> they just don't have... Uh, it's only human beings that are given the gift of speech. And so I, I wonder, you know, if, 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 if that isn't one way in which we are made in the image and likeness of God, intelligible, communicative speech. Uh, the words are different in different languages, but, you know, they're all communicating information, thoughts, emotions, and so on. And if only human beings have the power of words and only human beings are made in the image and likeness of God, I wonder if God's word has such power, I wonder how much power human words have. Well, uh, Proverbs gives us a little inkling where it says, you know, the power of life 
and death is in the power of the tongue. Tongue, lips, mouth, uh, all related to speech. Power of life and death. Well, let's think now. Do we have that power? You know, I remember words that were sent to me that were very cutting and uh, diminishing from when I was a teenager, when I was a child. I remember things that were said and the wounds that they left in me. And uh, I think of the uh, father who's got the uh, wayward son or daughter and he says, you know, I'm sorry you were born. I, I, I wish you would get out of my life. I don't want to see you anymore. We, we uh, excommunicate you from our family. You're no longer a family member. What kind of words are these? What do they do to the listener? Well, it depends on the listener, of course. But uh, think of a father saying things like that to his daughter when she makes a mistake. Oh, you stupid thing. How could you do that? You're just like, oh, never mind. And uh, you know, what does that do to that daughter? And what is that? I'm sorry you were born. It's just done a little annoyance to, to me. You, you cause us so much trouble. What does that do to that daughter? Well, we know what it does. That daughter may carry those words for a lifetime. Or how about another father and says, hey, uh, I love you, I, I, I love you now, I always did love you, and I always will love you. You are an answer to my prayer. You are everything I dreamed of. And I just, I just thank God for you. You're like a gift from heaven to me. Huh? What's that? What kind of words? What does that do to that daughter? Well, we're told that water words have a lifetime effect. One can diminish uh, one daughter and make her feel insecure or some things like that. And uh, the other daughter uh, of confidence, uh, uh, fully free to be able to express herself without judgment. And, uh, you know, words, just words. You don't kill them with a gun, you kill them with words. The power of life and death and the power of the tongue. Some of the great leaders of uh, the world within uh, my lifetime. One, for instance, he was born in uh, Austria. I think he was a, a wallpaper hanger or something like that. But he had certain ideas and so on. and. Uh, he contemplated these ideas, and uh, he, he was in prison, and he wrote a book while he was in prison. And that book contained the ideas that he had, philosophical ideas, political ideas. Uh, I think his name was um, Adolf. Oh, yes. You got it. Adolf Hitler. Now, that man, as far as we know, never flew a plane, never dropped a bomb, never drove a tank, and as far as we know, never shot a gun. But that man, through the power of words, spoke. And if you ever look on YouTube and, uh, and listen to Hitler's speeches, he was energized. He was motivated. Uh, he spoke with authority and with vision. And uh, that man, through the power of words, was able to change an entire nation of intelligent, creative, extraordinary people into murderers. And we, we see some of the atrocities that one man speaking words did to an entire nation and really to the entire world. And it was called World War II, of which 
that nation, Germany, was a part. And then we crossed the um, English Channel, and uh, we come to this other nation, this island nation, and they had a leader too. He was kind of chunky. He, I, I have pictures of him wearing a stovepipe uh, hat, uh, chomping on a cigar, and I understand he enjoyed a good shot of whiskey at times. That man also understood the power of words. And let me say, you know, you have power of words. If you're a human being and you can speak, and even if you use sign language, it's a mode of communication that is effective. But this chunky fellow on the island nation of England when the Germans were bombing the stuffing out of London, bomb after bomb, buzz bombs, um, decimating their nation. And people were wondering, you know, can we survive this? Uh, uh, do we need to surrender? And this man, understanding the power of words, uh, used every means of communication available to him and uh, he said, oh, we'll fight him on the, uh, in the air, we'll fight him in the sea, we'll fight him on the landing grounds, we'll fight him in the beaches, we'll fight him in the city, but we will never surrender, never surrender. You know, his name was Winston Churchill. I remember his name because I think of a church on a hill. That one man understood the power of words and he spoke strength and courage to an entire nation that they were able to stand wounded but standing and getting healed enough to, with others, the United States, win that war at great sacrifice, but they did not surrender. At the, at the same time in uh, history, there was another young man, I think he was born in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, I don't say he was slender, I think he was a skinny Bible school student. And uh, you know, he had a, a message he wanted to communicate too. He had read in a book. A message that resonated with him, in, invigorated him, and uh, re resounded in his spirit and his heart and mind and tongue. And that one young man, wherever he had opportunity, spoke of these ideas contained in the Gospels of the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke with conviction, he spoke with authority, he didn't speak like a, a wimpy dish rag, he spoke as a man that was convinced of the truth of his, not his ideas, God's ideas. Of course you know his name was Billy Graham. And that man changed the lives through the power of preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. He changed the world for nations, for peoples. And many, as a result of his ministry, are today speaking the same message throughout the world. What am I saying? I'm saying you, my listener, you, you have the power of words. Now we use them primarily to those who are around us, our family, how we speak to our spouse, how we speak to our children, how we speak to our siblings, how we speak to our parents. We're speaking all, every day, not just communicating information, but encouraging, lifting, appreciating, commending, beautiful, wonderful words that can make a person's day and make a person's lifetime. I believe in you. Oh, I admire what you're doing. Yes, that is a great idea. 
Let me help you. Let's think about it. Yes. Oh, I, I just enjoy being with you. Every time we get together, you know, uh, don't lie. You don't want to lie. But when something is true, speak it. How about words of appreciation, admiration, affirmation? We don't have to criticize. You can say, well, that's an interesting idea, and uh, uh, why do you come on that? Do you think of alternatives? There are different ways to bring construction, constructive ideas to a situation. On the day of Pentecost, we read in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit descended upon the 120 gathered in that upper room. And some say the Holy Spirit descended on the church at that time too. Well, yes. And what did they, what does the Bible say specifically that they began to do as the Spirit of God came upon them and filled them. What did they do? Did they dance? Did they clap their hands? Did they spin around? Did they start to sing and so on? Well, well the scriptures say they began to speak in other tongues. How? As the Spirit of God gave them the utterance. Oh, that magnificent, powerful thought that the Spirit of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit can come upon a human being in such a way that they are speaking words that the Holy Spirit gave them. And He's still doing that. And he can do that you and me. And we're not all called to be a Billy Graham and Nobody's called to be a Hitler, that's for sure. But we're all called to use the gifts that God has given us. And, and one of those gifts that perhaps is the way in which we are in His image and after His likeness. That's the power of words, and we have them. So. What am I saying? Let's use the power that, don't complain about what we don't have, use what we do have. We have words uh, to, to build people up, to commend them, uh, not to kill, steal, and destroy, but to affirm, to build unity and faith. You have those words. I have them. I'm using them right now to speak to you, and it's always a pleasure. So the thought I'd like to conclude with is this. Words are powerful, and we all, you and I, everyone, we use words daily, independent of which language in which we speak. Those words are powerful, so let's speak as the Spirit of God gives us utterance. My name is Roy. I'm a missionary to Romania and beyond. Saying thanks for listening, and I'll be back. God bless. Goodbye.